Good evening, everybody. Today we are starting the show at uh, six o'clock, uh, and today also happens to be the 161st birth birth anniversary of poet Rabindranath Tagore. Now, it is very important that uh, while we are celebrating his birthday, and as we had said in our announcement post in social media, that this is being celebrated uh, across borders, across the world wherever a where the bengalis are located and also people around the world who need not necessarily be bengalis but tagore is a man of the universe now the question that we are trying to debate today not really debate we are going to have a discussion uh professor shushant dottogupta's book vishwa bharati 1921 2021 a vision betrayed so have we betrayed him or uh, is there any way we can get back and make amendments, whatever, that is something that Professor Shushanta Dattogupta will be discussing with Dr. Patho Ghosh. Now, before I invite them to come on the show, uh, let me tell you something about the about Kahani Kancheti. Kahani Kancheti is a digital platform where we discuss issues, we deliberate, and uh, we uh, talk about anything that falls under the big umbrella of art and entertainment. So we discuss films, we discuss books, uh, we uh, talk theater, we music, and all kinds of anything. It's a very, it's a very wide range of subjects that we discuss. And importantly, uh, we have a website which we would like you all to visit uh, from time to time and uh, read our book reviews, uh, read our blogs, and uh, also at the same time we uh, hold these authors' chats. So these authors' chats are. Uh, very important, uh, and that is something that we'll be holding one today. Now, today we also have, uh, I want to tell you about our publisher uh, today, that is uh, Thema. Uh, just give me a minute, there seems to be a slight problem here. Uh, I, I want to tell you something about Thema, uh, who are the publishers of this book by uh, Professor Dr. Gupto. Now, Thema is a relatively, well, I would not say very relatively, they were founded in the late 1980s, and they focus on uh, and specialize on in radical literature, in translation, 20th century Indian classics in translation, memoirs and personal texts by actresses from the theater and cinema, studies in music, documentation of popular culture, proverbs and women's life, and the radical literature translations they have featured authors like Mahashita Devi, Gunter Grass, uh, Manik Bondopadhyay, Shomarish Bosch, and poets from the Naxalite underground with substantial introduction. And uh, other than theatre and uh, books on film, uh, they have been uh, they have several titles which are designed which have been designed and illustrated by artists like Pundin Dupotri, Prakash Karmukar, Shubha Prashodno. Uh, Tapan Bhattacharji and even Gunter Grass and the authors and translators include Gayatri Chakrabarti Spivak, uh, S. N. Bose, um, uh, Minakshi Mukherjee, uh, Koruna Banerjee, P. C. Ray, and uh, we also have Mohan Agashi, Kumar Sahani, uh, Shomito Chattopadhyay, Ustad Alavia Khan, C. V. Raman, and P. C. Mohala Nobu. So that is Thema, uh, whose books personally, if you ask me, I think they have the uh, choices uh, they have the choices uh, range of books that uh, one can you know, one can think of so that is uh, that's that that's thema and now let me first bring in uh, the subject of the book which is vishwabharati 1921 2021 and uh, this is actually the book which i am holding in in my hand that you can see I think it is that painting of, uh, I think that is by Gogonindranath or Abonindranath of Tagore, probably speaking at the town hall. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not a, I'm not a Tagore, uh, I, I cannot say that with authority, but I think that is what it is. But here is something that I want to, I wanted to start with, is that uh, there is a, in the first chapter, Tagore model of education, uh, there is a one paragraph which struck my, uh, which, uh, which caught my attention, the shaping of Vishwa Bharati, where he says that Vishwa Bharati evolved as an idea and an ideal held dear by Tagore. Within the name Vishwa Bharati itself is embedded the entire idea of a university. Now, is that 
university is what we are talking about today or and since this is about bishop bharati where all have we gone and betrayed him so to get into more into the discussion let me first bring in our author uh, uh, shushanto daptugupto and uh, there he is and uh, a small introduction i'll try and keep it very small because both my guests today have such uh, are such eminent people that it becomes very difficult i don't know which one to keep and which to live uh, to keep and so here is uh, uh, here is our professor dr gupto uh, professor dr gupto uh, had joined presidency college uh, kolkata in 68 as a lecturer in physics and in 69 he went to us to join the book brook haven national laboratory uh, st john's university from where he did his doctoral research to obtain a phd in physics in 1973 he continued in us for three more years uh, as a post doctoral fellow at the carnegie mellon university in pittsburgh well after that he had, he had spent a time after returning to india in 76 and joined the material science laboratory at indira gandhi center for atomic research in kalpakam and he moved on to uh, as a reader the school of physics university of hyderabad and in 86 he was offered a job at uh, jnu jawala nehru university where he taught till 1992 first as professor and later as dean of school of physics sciences physical sciences he returned to kolkata in 1999 assuming responsibility as director of sn bose national center for basic sciences and then directorship of indian institute of science education and research iifer at kolkata and in 2011 he was appointed as vice chancellor of vishwa bharati university and uh, among his books he has authored a whole number of books on science which i am skipping but there is a book called a random walk in shantiniketan ashram which is a collection of essays penned during his tenure as a vice chancellor of of uh, vishwa bharati so that we have it with us professor shushanto dr gupto uh, i think i have been able to edit that whole thing perfectly sir uh in uh, and i think the, the the description is and now uh dr patko ghosh now in my uh, in our post announcing this position we had uh, given a line about him saying that he is a popular scientist and somebody had asked me why did you call him a popular scientist i said because everybody you talk to says that he is a man who has actually popularized science for us and everybody said oh quest Dr. Ghosh from Quest. So yeah, this is Dr. Ghosh from Quest. As you can see him, he is right now in front of us. And thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And uh, uh, let me also tell you something about uh, Dr. Pasco Ghosh. He is an Indian physicist, an author, philosopher, musician, and former professor at S N Bose National Center for Basic Sciences in Kolkata. He is also the former chairman of Shotujit Ray Film and Television Institute in Kolkata. and is currently a member of the board of trustees of academy of fine art he is one of india's best known popularizers of modern science and has written influential papers and books on physics and uh, very importantly there is a uh, he has made an award winning national award winning film called the quantum indian which is about great indian scientists like professor shotin bose cv raman and meghna shah uh, his exposition of rabindranath tagore's philosophy and music has found expression in several scholarly papers he also served as the honorary secretary of vishwa bharati music board a few years ago so here we have somebody who is a scientist who has also very closely worked with uh, professor shotin bose in his last days if i am right uh, dr gosh and uh, professor shotin bose is now back in the currency after the got article so uh, that's uh, that, that's the, that, that's why a lot of people are now remembering him so now to leave the stage i have only one question if we have betrayed him who has betrayed him if the people of india betrayed him to which to whom he had left his legacy and his vision and his thoughts to carry forward or have the pol- have the politics in this country taken over his vision and well i saw a facebook post today that tagore is still an industry somebody had uh, there was this post going around in facebook it had gone viral so is it the industry is it something that can be encashed that has been encashed over a period of time by different political groups or has the whole vision of tagore the vishwa bharati concept 
got embroiled into you know the various kind of and it was supposed to be and if i may just read this one line out before i hand you over to dr ghosh is this one line over here which is uh, uh, a speech from uh, a, a speech from uh, jawalal nehru in the parliament here yeah, here it is he says we have looked upon vishwa bharati not only as a very great institution but also a special and unique institution and we are particularly anxious that it should not fall into the rut of other universities this is a speech by pandit jawalal nehru in the indian parliament on 3rd may 1951 all right i go off right now uh mr ghosh dr ghosh it's all yours and shri santosh will take on the uh. thank you very much uh it's a great pleasure and honor to be uh, on this show thank you shujit very much for inviting me um the topic is extremely close to my heart and uh I have also taught myself at Vishwavarathi. That was the first job I had after I uh, did my PhD under Professor S. N. Bose. So I was there for seven and a half long years, and after that, also, I have a house there. I keep going there. It's a place that is kind of sacred to me, uh, and it's it's very painful to see the way it is going. Now. Uh, Professor Dr. Gupta has written a book uh, about Vishwarathi, the vision betrayed. Uh, I'll just very briefly tell you uh, what it contains. Part one uh, is uh, Vishwarathi, a grand vision. Part two is Tagore and the scientific spirit. Part three is interfaces with community and nature. Part four is the 1951 act and the present actors and in that the final uh, uh, section is what he calls a road map for vishwar now with that background let me just say a few words about the vision because i think it's extremely important to know the actual facts which uh, led to this 1951 act but before that let me just tell you what the act says in fact the act quotes what rabindranath had uh, in mind for his vishwabharati way back in 1921 and the according to that the objects the objects of the university were number 1 to study the mind of man in its realization of different aspects of truth from diverse points of view to bring into more intimate relations with one another through patient study and research the different cultures of the east on the basis of their underlying unity that's number 1 number 2 to approach the west from the standpoint of such a unity of the life and thought of asia which i think is a very very important point to look at the west from our own point of view the third one is to seek to realize in a common fellowship of study the meeting of the east and the west and thus ultimately to strengthen the fundamental conditions of world peace through the establishment of free communication of ideas between the two hemispheres and finally with such ideals in view to provide at shantiniketan a center of culture he didn't call it a university a center of culture where research into and study of here is the list the religion literature history science and art of hindu buddhist jain islamic sikh christian and other civilizations 
may be pursued along with the culture of the West. With that simplicity in externals, with that simplicity in externals, which is necessary for true spiritual realization in amity, good fellowship, and cooperation between the thinkers and scholars of both Eastern and Western countries, free from all antagonisms of race, nationality, creed, or caste, and in the name of the one supreme being who is Shantam Shivam Advaita. This is written in print. And I would also like to remind you that the motto of Vishwarati is unique. If I'm not mistaken, it's taken from the Rig Veda. It says, Yatra Vishwam Bhavati Eka Niram. One single nest of the entire world. That is the vision. He gave a lecture in the United States <clears throat> long ago with where it's, it's called my school. I'll just read out one or two sentences from there. He says, I know what it was to which this school owes its origin. It was not any new theory of education, but the memory of my school days. Though I did not have to serve the full penal term, which men of my position have to undergo, to find their entrance into cultured society. I am glad that I did not altogether escape from its molestation, for it has given me knowledge of the wrong from which the children of men suffer. That is the origin of Vishwabharati. First a school and then out of that the university. Now here is a, a very important historical fact which I would like to point out, which is that in 1940, Mahatma Gandhi came to Shantiniketan for the last time. He was there for a couple of days and then when he was about to leave, Rabindranath pressed into his hand a letter at, with the request that he shouldn't open it before leaving Shantiniketan. Let me read out the last paragraph. And now before you take your leave of Shantiniketan, I make my fervent appeal to you. Accept this institution under your protection. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I make my yes. fervent appeal. You, accept this institution under your protection, giving it an assurance of permanence if you consider it to be a national asset. Vishwabharati is like a vessel which is carrying the cargo of my life's best treasure, and I hope it may claim special care from my countrymen for its preservation. This was written on 19th February 1940 and after leaving Shantiniketan on his way back uh, Mahatmaji read that letter and immediately wrote back a reply in which he said dear Gurudev the touching note that you put into my hands as we parted has gone straight into my heart of course, Vishwabharati is a national institution. It is undoubtedly also international. You may depend upon my doing all I can in the common endeavor to assure its permanence. I look to you to keep your promise to sleep religiously for about an hour daily during the day, etc., etc. Yours, M.K. Gandhi. So that was the trust that uh, Rabindranath had placed on Gandhi to keep his Shantiniketan alive, to preserve it. And an assurance was given. And after independence, 
the onus fell on the then Minister of Education, Abdul, Abdul Kalam Azad, to bring in the Bishwabharati bill. It was debated in Parliament. Uh, I would leave uh, uh, Professor Dr. Gupta to talk about it if he wants to. But let me just say that what, what one of the things that Maulana Azad had said, it said, nature has provided it with the canopy of the sky and the open places and they do not want to make any additions to them in the form of brick and stone. And Jawahar Nehru said, and I entirely agree with Dr. Mukherjee, that is Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, when he laid stress on certain factors that may be called external, if you like, but nevertheless, which must have a very powerful influence in molding the student there and creating a new environment, whether it is teaching in the mangrove grove or doing anything like that. I entirely agree with him that we should not spend our money on a large number of brick structures as we unfortunately still do in making our buildings, whether educational buildings uh, or other buildings, and have little left to carry on the work in those buildings. So this is the background to uh, the bill and the act. And that, that ideal, that, that, that trust which Rabindranath had, uh, or, or the trust which Mahatma Gandhi had given to Rabindranath, question is, has it been betrayed? Uh, I largely share Professor Dr. Gupta's view that it has been betrayed because, in my opinion, and in the opinion of my science guru, Professor Shatendran Nath Bose, it's this. When I was going to join Shantidiketan as a lecturer in those days, he told me that you see, Rabindranath did not want a typical university. But the day Mr. Nehru made it into a formal university, there is no use looking for Rabindranath there. That was his assessment. And I think that is a correct assessment. Now I leave it to Dr. Dr. Gupta to say uh, whatever he would like to. But I think uh, if we can concentrate on this vision and its betrayal, uh, that would serve the purpose best. Over to you. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Parthagor. I would also take this opportunity to thank profusely Sujit Sanyal and Kahani Panchati for hosting this show and for doing all the hard background work. You know, it, it requires a lot of preparations. And all that. So thank you, Sujit. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Professor Ghosh has already laid down the vision of Vishwa Bharati, Tagore's vision, Gandhi's vision, the vision of people in the parliament, uh, I see a frown on Partho Babu. Uh, am I not audible? Yes. Okay, good. So, so I, uh, I shan't repeat those very important words which have been expressed so eloquently. I would come straight to the poser that was made by Sujit Sannal at the outset. Have we betrayed Tagore? Who has betrayed? He asked the question, is it the country, the Bengalis, the politicians, the people of Shantinikitan, the ashramites, the faculty, the students, who it is? Now, all these, I mean, the answers to these questions are all interconnected. But before I dwell on those, and of course, Professor Ghosh can, because as he said, he spent eight long years as a teacher in Shikha Bhavan in Shantiniketan. His guru, 
Professor Satyananda Bose was also a vice chancellor in Vishwavarati Upacharya, who, however, uh, I could uh, survive four years and five months. I think Satyan Bose could survive only two and a half years, maybe. Anyway, so coming back to this issue that Sujit Shanyal has raised, let me first read out something that is not in the book. This is actually in a small book called Letters to a Friend, 1913 to 1922, published by Routledge. And this is actually from Rabindranath Tagore to his very close friend, C.F. Andrews. From Antwerp on October 3rd, 1920, Shanti Niketan must be saved from our dirty politics. Now remember the date, 1920 is more than a century ago. From Paris, September 7, 1920, politics in our country is very petty. It has a pair of legs, one of which has shrunk and shriveled and become paralytic and therefore feebly waits for the other one to drag it on. There is no harmony between the two and our politics in its hoppings and totterings and falls is comic and undignified. Perhaps the strongest repudiation comes from New York on November 4th in the same year of 1920. And I quote from Tagore, there is one thing I wish to speak to you about. Keep Shanti Nikitan away from the turmoil of politics. I know that the political problem is growing in India and its encroachment is difficult to resist. But all the same, we must never forget that our mission is not political. When I have my politics, I do not belong to Shanti Niketan. I do not mean to say that there is anything wrong in politics, but that is out of harmony with our ashram. We must clearly realize this fact that the name of Shanti Niketan has a meaning for us and this name will have to be made true. I am anxious and afraid that the surrounding forces may become too strong for us and we succumb to the onslaught of the present time. Because the time is troubled and the minds of men are distracted, all the more must we, through our ashram, maintain our faith in Shantam, Shivam, and Advaitam, unquote. So this is what Tagore thought about politics. But now, which politics is he talking about in 1920? This is actually connected with our freedom struggle movement, the political issues that were brought out by his very good friend, Mahatma Gandhi and others. And even that he is abhorring. Now, I don't have to tell this audience that there's a huge difference between politics of that day and politics of today. Now, question Sujit Sanal asks, who betrayed uh, the country at large, the Bengalis? Well, as I said, uh, the answer is very complex. Uh, I would largely, of course, say that there were there have been very some of the influential Bengalis which, who have occupied highest positions uh, in the country. Uh, probably have not uh, understood the ethos and the values and the ideals that Tagore had while creating Vishwavarati. But it will be futile to simply blame also the politicians from Bengal who had gone to Delhi maybe. But you also have to say that uh, how could they do it unless uh, there was there are problems which were internal, intrinsic problems. So this is a question that we can debate, Sujit Babu. And this is something that will take, you know, I think some analysis. But uh, I would like to say, uh, as Professor Ghosh had already indicated, that to Robindranath, Vishwa Bharati was a model education center. And in this, a couple of things I want to stress, that if you all know that after Nalanda University, which is, you know, the oldest university in the whole world, and, and of course, Takshila is older, 
and so we had the, the very old universities and at this point let me point out like tagore did nalanda was very international you know, people came from china and other parts of the world to work there then there was a huge gap and then came macaulay's calcutta Mom bombay and madras universities in 1857 58 but they were all based on this british model of education and subsequently most of our universities have become like this so i'm digressing a little bit to put vishwavarati issues and problems in the context of the universities at large in india and what did tagore want to do partly also madan mohan malviya but i would say any besan because she was the biggest advisor to madan mohan malviya in creating banaras hindu university and also the aligarh muslim university muslim university these three universities were built on indian values tagore wanted to take the university away 160 kilometers away from calcutta so that the to lessen the influence of the british model of education to go back to upanishada and vedic values to have open air classes so that children from the very young age imbibe facts of nature while having classes outside on ecology entomology how ants grow colonies how uh, dogs and cows behave the animal behavior and how you no know, we have we are very fortunate that we have sunlight over all through the year almost and then uh, you could explain to the children how photosynthesis works so you know the nature was a laboratory for him and and so it was actually a very scientific way of thinking and this was however very very different model from any other model and so how did he see this he saw this as a model education center for the country which he was hoping that you will get independent soon i mean that of course took some another 25 27 years to happen but so it was a model for india now uh, what happened well uh, i think tagore himself realized it that uh, you know taking it to a village setting which was required because rural reconstruction and bonding with the community were part and parcel of the university so uh, Uh, therefore he had to take to uh, to uh, a place which was away from calcutta but then he see uh, the flip side of that is that uh, you know provincialism got into it and so bishwarati then becomes like a large family with all the intricacies of a large family structure uh, the cousins fight uh, the various relatives fight but then they all come together when there's a family big function or something so it's a it's a cocoon atmosphere and so now that is an atmosphere in which politicians thrive so you see in my experience politicians just simply don't get in from outside is the insiders who actually for for accentuating their own missions for own short term ideals in white politicians and of course rovindranath is no question uh, somebody uh, fascistically said uh, something what uh, is a brand or something but indeed rovindranath is a brand insignia for bengalis and so every bengali knows of rovindranath and every bengali has an opinion on him uh, every bengali thinks rovindra shongi so therefore uh, you know the definitely vishwavarti is in the in the center of attraction for most bengali politicians anything that happens there they would like to move in there and so it's a combination of everything we can discuss this of course thread bear because i think it is time to discuss and you also should discuss the problems of vishwavarti as not an isolated one but look at it as also the look at the problems also as problems which plague the university system in india today and and rovindranath uh, didn't want any of this i want to add incidentally to what professor ghosh said about his being you know uh very secular in the, the true sense of the word he was very pluralistic 
and he had uh, even his father had people uh, from Islam, from Buddhism. I mean, you no, know, he was he was a big Devanandar Tagore was a big bhakt of Kabir, and then he went to Amritsar to learn about Guru Nanak even before Tagore was born actually, and and so. Uh, very emancipated people and you know there is the department of philosophy but it's called department of philosophy and comparative religion very interesting name which i have not seen anywhere else so anyway so that is now what was his vision padabhavan and shiksha shatra were basically the roots of vishwarupa and then in 1919 itself of course padabhavan formally came into existence in 1925 but it grew out of the brahmacharya ashram which was created in 1901 and shikha shastra was actually uh, it preceded part of over 1922 but then they had to move it to uh, sri niketan umadas gupta's book that we covered uh, some time ago discusses this point so i shan't get into that and then in 1919 as early as 1919 tagore created kala sangeet bhavan and before that the foundation of vidya bhavan was laid in 1918 so you see school and then research centers and kala and sangeet so you know but from that then fast forward we become a central university all kinds of posts will be coming positions ugc act Uh, act of parliament act various acts and then you have various actors also then there is uh, you no know, net requirement there is a nac requirement all kinds of things but is this what they got wanted i mean you no know, i mean he he left his school because he felt throttled by the stif- no, stifling atmosphere of a formal schooling system and so these rules and regulations which interestingly I mean, it's not just what we are saying. In as early as 1950, the parliamentarians. I mean, Professor Ghosh mentioned Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, but there is also Ram Ram Suvak Singh from Bihar, K T Shah, then then uh, Madan Mohan Malviya, then C D Deshmukh. They're all saying, "What are you doing with this act? I mean, you're destroying the the ideals and values of Guru Dev." And so. Uh, now from that you know the rest is history what happened after that and so we we can talk about it but maybe let's see how the discussion goes now yeah <clears throat> i think you have made some very <clears throat> important points uh, but uh, you know politics is there always you can't ever avoid it uh but i would just like to make one or two comments It, it, it is this structure of a conventional university with all its regulations and so on is precisely what robinson wanted to get away from and i think that is the first act of betrayal secondly <clears throat> as you rightly mentioned it's away from calcutta so i found that even during my time which is from late 1968 to 1975 very few top bengali intellectuals were actually interested in going and taking up a position in shadiniketan they would rather go to calcutta or bombay or elsewhere so they were always paying lip service to rabindranath they would come during vasantotsav they would come during poushutsav and that's it and they will sing ro in the song but i don't think anybody gave a damn about devoting some of his own time to the cause the number one i still remember shanti dev ghosh once telling me ji partho this is an ashram how can you destroy the very structure of an ashram and <laughs> it's an interesting side remark i would like to mention the many of you may know that the great physicist warner heisenberg came to calcutta in 1929 
he was on his way to Japan. So he first went to Banaras and then came to Calcutta only to see Rabindranath. Now, I'm, to cut a long story short, he finally met Rabindranath. Uh, a fine tea was organized by him, uh, by uh, Rabindranath. But what they discussed <coughs> was not recorded. However, he went to Darjeeling from Kolkata and wrote a letter to his father from there. I got a copy of this letter by writing to his student Reckenberg, who is well known to have compiled a whole volume, uh, uh, volumes of books on the history of quantum mechanics together with Jagdish Mehra. And Reckenberg sent me this letter with a little translation where he said, I, you remember this great poet who came to Munich? I met him yesterday. And he was talking to me about his new school. He was trying to build a new kind of school. And then Heisenberg remarks, I don't think the British will allow him to do it. See, there were so many obstacles to realizing the great ideal of Rabindranath. But I personally think that it's too good an idea to lose. And all of us must do something to at least preserve the idea in some form, if not in Shantiniketan, somewhere else. After all, I don't think Gurudev thought that one particular place, Shantiniketan, will suffice for the whole world. It's the idea which has to be uh, replicated in many places. So how about that, Professor Dr. Gurudev? Yeah, taking a cue from that, and I should also say at the outset to the audience that the book simply doesn't say that we should give up our hands and the, the, the whole vision has been betrayed. The last chapter, we do talk about a roadmap where some redemptions can be made, some restructuring to preserve the visions of devotees. That's number one. Number two, I totally agree with Professor Ghosh. The idea and the ideal of Tagore is such so deep, so profound that it need not be just localized in a place called Shantinikatan. It can be replicated in so many different places, maybe in smaller forms, maybe not as large as a university, etc. And so, therefore, uh, it, the, nobody is questioning the great vision of Tagore, but how that vision today as it stands seems to be not realizable in the structure of Vishwavarati today. So let me point out a few of the problems uh, which actually existed even during Tagore's time. And in fact, Uma Das Gupta in her book on Sri Niketan also points out. For instance, Sri Niketan. You know, if you think, if you really know Vishwavarati, you know, or if you have understood Tagore, from 1920 onwards, Tagore was focusing a lot of his attention on Sri Niketan. I mean, Elmhurst came around that time from Cornell, and then, of course, uh, uh, you know, in all his forays abroad and meeting people, Roma Rola, then Albert Einstein, 1926, three, two times, 1930, three times. In between, he goes to Russia and writes Russia Chichi, the letters from Russia. He gets Prashanto Maranovich, who formerly acted as a secretary, but he was a great disciple of Tagore. And Tagore goaded him to apply statistics to farming, cooperative movement, mechanized tractors. So he wanted to put science into practical use for the village upliftment. However, I don't think he wanted these regular university structures where you'd have a physics department. I'm a physicist, so I can say it with confidence. Physics department, chemistry department with all laboratories, etc., etc. But if there's an act of parliament, there are posts and UGC gives posts. The local people would, of course, be interested in getting those posts. It provides job opportunities for people around. So these are all kinds of pressures. Now about Sriniketan. Das Gupta book points out that even during Tagore's time, Tagore could only in 
impress upon Nondolal Bose to go and work in Sri Niketan. Others thought, oh, village craft is not our cup of tea, not, not the, what, uh, for instance, Kalabhavan should do. So there was this chism between Shanti Niketan and Sri Niketan from those days. And this gap has widened more and more. Sri Niketan people live in a very cocooned, complacent atmosphere. They, you know, uh, they are happy to get their salary and all that, but nothing seems to be happening there. And most of the people are inbred. They're, they're, they were got their degrees from maybe Shikha Bhavon, Botany, Zoology, and they went there. But uh, there is no symbiosis or synergy between Shanti and Sri Niketan. It's a huge, huge problem. Now, what Professor Ghosh said about Shanti Dev Ghosh saying it's an ashram. But what is an ashram? Ashram basically comprises of the Upasana Griha, and then Pada Bhavan, then Kala Bhavan, Shangit Bhavan, and Rovindra Bhavan. Now, everything that you see in the newspapers, every problem, etc., uh, and, and vice chancellors focus on uh Barir Mondir, etc. It's all in happening there. But what about Vidya Bhavon, Vasha Bhavon? What about Shikha Bhavon? What about Sri Niketan? People don't seem to worry about it. It's also for Bengalis who travel from Calcutta to Shanti Niketan, the attractions are Poshutshav, Bashantutshav, etc. etc. And they're all actually in that ashram area with strong participation from Shongit Bhavan and Kala Bhavan partly. And, but you know, the other Bhavan seem to be decoupled from that. So how do you, how do you gel all these things together is a, is a huge thing. And I think Tagore, uh, I mean, Tagore with his great influence, with his, you know, great personality, he could think of this as a holistic mission, but to really execute this holistic idea, I think is a very difficult task. And you need really people yes. with strong devotions to do it, commitments to do it. Uh, I mentioned that, but I would also just like to add, Sushant Babu, that yeah. Vishwabharati is the only employer in that entire district. And therefore, there was this tremendous, this is the politics, the tremendous pressure from the hinterland to employ the local people. Yes. Yes, indeed. indeed. That is a big I agree. problem. I agree. So, I agree. We, so needed, we needed other so universities, it, other colleges, so that, right. you know, those interested in the run of the mill education could go there. Yeah. But now so there people, is, everybody is going there and everybody wants a degree at the end. And yeah. Tagore is yeah. one person who did not want to build another machine for manufacturing graduates. Yes. But that's what, what it has become. become. Yeah, people very fascist, facetiously call it oh, Bhuvandanga University, Bolpur University. But as you said, I, I actually tried very hard. Nobody worthy of salt and good academics from Calcutta want to move there. They, exactly. uh, you met the, you use the phrase, they pay lip service. They are very, very critical of what's going on, but then they don't want to go and work very hard for that. But there were earlier people who worked very hard, Amlan Dotto and others, you know, Surajit Sina, Patul Gupta, they, they, they tried to work very hard. But then, yeah, I, know, I remember Ashok Rudra. Was a very yes, well known also. statistician. Yes. Yes. I mean, I was talking about only the vice chancellor and Sotin was himself, yes. you know. So, but you know, uh, as you said, the problems have grown so much. And, and let me say one thing uh, in my defense also that, you know, I have served before Bishwavarti two other central universities. University of Hyderabad and Jawaharlal Nehru University. And I can say with some conviction that when uh, Sujit uh, Sanyal talked about politics, the politics actually get started from the teachers. And the impressionable students get affected, the karmacharis get affected, but the teachers stay in the background and they create 
some of these issues. Now, this will happen more and more if the quality of teachers has gone down. And the quality of teachers will go down if you uh, have so much of inbreeding and all that. And if you make it a closed system so that you don't want people from outside. Now, here is another dichotomy, Professor Ghosh. I personally feel that areas like Shongit and Kola, they, in fact, have to depend on traditions. I mean, there is something called, let's say, Gayoki of, of Shantiniketan, you know, starting from Shoila Yababu and then uh, Shanti Dev Gosh, etc. So, and and Gayoki has to be maintained. You know, you can, uh, somebody from Calcutta or Delhi cannot come and imbibe that Gayoki. Same is true with Kalabhava. But you can't say that same thing for physics department. That's physics is an international subject. So how do you, you know, combine all these things? How do you have a synthesis of all these things? This is a huge challenge. And the other, of course, challenge uh, administratively is that you have two parshalas, Ananda Parshala and Santosh Parshala. So children get into Vishwavarati at the age of four, four and a half, five. And then they typically do PhD maybe at the age of 30. So the administration also has to deal with a whole gamut, whole spectrum of people from the age of four and a half to 30. I mean, who uh, even you know, bed waiting becomes a problem for a vice chancellor to handle. So, you know, so these are these are things which, so therefore, what I will come back to this earlier point. If it, if it had remained an ashram, Without all this paraphernalia of uh, huge university structure, UGC Act, NAC, etc., etc., then I think we could have maybe preserved uh, Vishwavarati ideals. Uh, and some of these points are made in the last chapter of the book. So we don't want to leave the audience on a pessimistic note. We want to say that indeed there are possibilities to revamp the thing with some very creative, some very, very innovative uh, concepts. I see Sujit Sanyal uh, back. So yeah, we are just coming for a minute because uh, so far on the chat box, I think people are just listening to what you all are discussing. It, it is actually as, uh, uh, and I just to put up, and all I'm getting are appreciations. Uh, for example, uh, uh, of course, uh, Tizi Besh is an old friend, so but he says that this, uh, he wants to thank Kahani Kanchiti for this program. Well, Kahani Kanchiti wants to thank these two people for, I, I am absolutely spellbound, Bakrudhu at this point of time. And uh, Indrani Sen has uh, also got this to say that it's a very interesting program. Uh, Rajinder Singh, uh, Rajinder Singh has this point to make. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a popular science writer from Germany. Hi, Rajinder. I'm glad that wow. you could join. And yes. so there I, you think, are. I think uh, Parthogosh and I had gone to Dhaka in 2005. And 2005 was, is the year of physics, the miraculous year of physics, uh, because 1905 was the miraculous year. We were celebrating the centenary. And Dhaka University was doing it something on, on uh, Einstein and Bose, uh, because Bose uh, uh, you know, taught in Dhaka University for 25 long years, and Rajinder was there. So I'm very happy to see him. So what does he say? Oh, Professor Sushant Dr. He says that Professor Sushant Dr. Wonderful analysis yeah. of the structure of Vishwa Bharati. And of course, uh, they were in between. The Udmimala said it's a good idea somewhere down the line. And Shamul Mojumdar uh, thinks that this is uh, uh, what we are discussing. This whole discussion, I presume, has been invaluable. Well, those are some of the, and, and there are no questions, and which is a very good thing. There are no questions because I don't think there is anything to question because you all have just kept us, uh, kept the audience absolutely spellbound with the kind of discussions that you are doing. It is really very, it's a very serious discussion that we are doing. It is not just an Sujit, with, yeah, Sujit, yes. Sujit, Sujit, with your permission, yeah. since there is a very yeah. learned audience, I want to say that, you know, don't take Vishwavarati in isolation. Look at the in what's happening to the university system in India, unlike Cambridge, Oxford, Bologna, Heidelberg, Sorbonne, then in America, Harvard, etc. And they survive all these long, long years. 
our universities don't seem to survive even institutes are not surviving because after all students get trained in the universities but the universities have been given a short shift by successive governments in our country and so slowly going down bhu is going down jnu is going down university of hyderabad is going down in terms of academic i mean real excellence of academics uh, while and i must say and as tagore himself pointed out in 1920 let us to cf andrews that there's nothing wrong in politics of course you know our students vote at the age of 18 there has to be politics but the machinations of politicians should not overwhelm the university structure and that is the problem so you see and that can happen if there is de deterioration of academic standards and uh, so you know great university like bhu is also suffering today and therefore it is time to ponder on and kahani concerti can do this that what is happening to the university structure of our country and and that doesn't seem to happen i mean do you think cambridge and oxford will uh, you know there will be Uh, problems there depending on whether the tories are in power or the labor party uh, is in power or even if trump comes as a us president does harvard go down so we have to ask these questions in our country very true sir very true as some more comments are coming as we are speaking and this is uh, uh, mr shushant kumar bardhan who actually is sharing this uh, live chat that we are doing and he says yeah what you all are saying and i also agree with him it's been extremely helpful and now if we move to uh, uh, shuguna satyamurthy he says she says i am an outsider and i am learning about vishu bharati putting vishu bharati under or uh, under the act was actually stealing his space yes she is a, she, she she lives in bangalore and she, her husband is a very distinguished uh, theoretical chemist and was a fellow founder of one of the iiscrs in mohali chandigarh and satyamurthy so suguna right. i think has read i i think she has read my book on random walk in shanti niketan ashram so uh, i'm very glad that she is here well thanks to both of you all kahani kanchiti is now attracting uh, viewers and audience from all over the world if i may say and uh, uh, rajin harshay has said that he Enjoying again, the program. Again, again, uh, Sujit, again, a former colleague of University of Hyderabad is a political scientist, and he had the distinction of being a vice, being the vice chancellor of Allahabad University. Oh, such eminence is now here at the Kahani Kanchiti platform. Now, going further, he said that you have been doing a wonderful analysis. Now, uh, going further, I want to put this to both of you all. You have talked about a roadmap. you have talked about a road map but then the question is that now today the reason why we and i must tell this to our audience the reason why we decided to do it today is on purpose because if you we were talking about betraying tagore's vision we thought the best day to choose actually would be on his birthday so this uh, this has uh, this has been done uh, with full consciousness having yeah yes shuram tada sujit sujit professor partogos is a great singer but i would say that on his birthday when shanti dev goshi insisted or some people in the ashram insisted that he should write something the first time he wrote he was about 38 tagore hoy hote tobo abhayo majhe nutano janmo daave so i think that you know this is the motto that don't be cowed down by fear nutano janmo daave parthobo you can sing that song at So I'm unfortunately <clears throat> my voice is packed up, uh, and I have not been singing. I have not been in the mood to sing for the last two years because of the pandemic and so many things. I must restart. But at the moment, my voice. Well, is if, if you if, if you do there. such such things, then I, then you are forcing me to maybe sing. <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, please! <laughs> I think you should. You should. <laughs> अभयो माचे नूतन जन्म दावे दिन ताहोते अखयो धाने शंशायो होते शोध साधने 
जड़ता होते नवीन जीवन नूतन जान मे भय होते तब अभय मे नूतन जान मे I think that's Amen. the hope. That's the hope. That's the hope. Yes. Two more. A couple yes. of comments. That's the hope. That's the hope. Couple of comments have come in. Uh, Professor Satyamurthy says that it is he actually who is committing using his wife's account. So that's that he mentioned that that he he is committing from uh, Suguna's account. And uh, Anjul Chakraborty says that this has been extremely well articulated. But there is a point here being made by uh, 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 Manoj Kumar Rai. He says that Shanti Dev Ghosh, as per Professor Ghosh, emphasised the concept of ashram rather than a university. How its higher order of derivatives, ashramites, can be ignored? <laughs> And yes, there are there are appreciations for your song, Shanti Dev. Uh, Professor Satya Murthy is uh, appreciating that song. It just came after that. And of course, my friend Tidhi Bish says it's wonderful. I think Tidhi Bish means the whole. Uh, the whole discussion, along with your song, has really made it wonderful. I am feeling wonderful in any case. Now, to answer that, where do we go from here? Do we keep on singing the old songs on Pontiche Boishak and re recite his poems and say that oh, what a great man he was, or do we use But him poet, for debate? Yeah. The poet, the poet Vishnu De, huh? wrote a poem called "Tumi Ki Shudhui Pontiche Boishak." Right. Yes. 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 And also, I should say, Sujit, that on 26th April we had a discussion on the Thema publication of this book. Uh, Professor Bartogos was in the audience, but the uh, the discussions were uh, Martin Kemchen, Chinmoy Guha, Vikas Sena, uh, and Shomik Bandavadhyay, my editor, uh, and myself. Now, point that Martin Kemchen made is that. Don't don't talk too much. Do things. Go and do. Work with the Adivasis. Work with the locals. Replicate Vishwavarathi ideas in This the local the, areas. That's and, the point. And, and so the the Karma Yogi Rabindranath has to be replicated, not just the ideals and ideals. So I think that is the very good thing. And Martin Kempchen, you probably would know of him, Sujit. He has. Authored many books on Tagore, and he is doing it on, on, at the ground level. The problem right. is, but just to take off, the problem yeah. is, Sujit Babu, hmm. that uh, that famous line where the mind is without fear and the head is at high. Now our minds are all full of fear. In security, in security, general situation, we dare not do or say things. It's a very sad ki commentary, hobby. but I, ki but hobby. I, I, I have some hope. Hobby, ha? Because I, I'm a kind of marbe. But I, I have some hope today. On my personal uh, Facebook page this morning, I had posted an English translation of Dharma Moh, and I found a lot of my friends shared it. They appreciated it. So I also felt that that Dharma Moh has given some uh, some hope to me because I am also equally hopeless of that. Ki hobe, and ki hobe is. And this point that you have made in your book, Sri Jantuda, is that uh, NCERT and you know CBSC. This is all going against the very concept of the ashram. Yes, Sri Jantuda. I just want to another point. Tagore was way ahead of your, his time. You know, he, today's climate issues that we are witnessing, the environmental degradation. Tagore model is very suited to preserve the environment. Okay. Now Tagore talks about community bonding. Today, our ministry, parent ministry, the HRD ministry, human resource—I don't know. Maybe the names have now changed. They—they they are saying that every university should actually incorporate a community college. Then every university should have a school. You know that there are Kendriya Vidyalayas in various IITs and even in JNU, but they are not organically bonded, unlike part of our own and Chikkatlo. But Tagore thought about these things more than 100 years ago. 
Now, so he is way ahead of his time. I mean, he's a very, very unusual uh, person in the scenario uh, at the level of Leonardo da Vinci or Goethe. And, and so, you know, but we, we have failed him. That's the problem. Yes. Uh, in fact, right now, Professor Satyamurti has this point. He says that inbreeding has destroyed all universities in the country and Vishwa Bharati is no exception. And of course, there I is a comment from uh, Joyce Guha who says that from uh, this is coming from actually Shubindu Guha, who I suppose you, you all may be knowing him. Uh, my classmate. Friend, I think, friend of Partha Ghosh. My, oh, my okay, classmate. So there you are. Oh, your the classmate, very successful all right. physicist. And his oh, younger brother and he went to MSC together in Calcutta University. I see. Okay. Now, Hi, this is the <laughs> So, you know, uh, till some years back when advertising in newspapers was a very big thing, you know, and, uh, and on Potishe Boishat, I think everybody from Sonadana Dokan to whoever, Kapore Dokan, they used to always have one line and it was very stupid why they had no other line. It was like a ritual. He now is Potishe Boishak, so we have to come out with an ad, put an illustration of Rabindranath in some form or the other, and the line used to be Mone Karove E Prabhate Ne Yami. And therefore, that, that, and so therefore, here, <laughs> homage to Ne, with few Dhubbati is illustrated. And so we don't seem to have gone beyond that. We haven't gone beyond that. True, there are institutions who are trying to, as you said, right, Ishushankada, the guy, the uh, the Gayoki, the Rabindranath, Rabishu Bharati Gayaki, like for instance, Indira Goshti, which was uh, which used to be run by uh, Shubhash Choudhury and Shuponna Choudhury, now being ably run by their uh, daughter, uh, Srinanda, and the granddaughter, Srimanti, but uh, who in fact had helped me to whenever uh, she is uh, she's more of a sibling. So whenever I have any issues of getting people on to discuss Tagore in any form, uh, she is my go to person. So, and I'm sure uh, she is around over here. So, the question is, we have to now, I think what we need to do is that we have to come together and try and get out of that boy. How we will do that, we don't know, but, but, but I don't know. But the fact is, this is the responsibility that I, I, from, uh, from my generation, I'm putting it on Dr. Ghosh and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Gupta. You all are the elders. Apna, uh, uh, jake, uh, boy, that, just, that, 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 that also also says that we are what you call retired and so retiring, retired. We are retiring our tires to make our vehicles move. But Sujit, you are ten years younger than us, so I think. Yeah, yeah, I am. So maybe. Who oh, I mean, no, no, no. is older than yeah. me, and so I think it's uh, <laughs> it, it's the younger generation who who's got to do it. Yes, it's the younger generation. Okay. We can point provide taking, the leadership. But, 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 but I think the point, one point you made, yes. that all of us should go and interact with the school children. I think they are the hopes of India. Yes, that is true. Rajinder Singh has a point here, uh, your friend. He says that does subject like physics has future in Vishwabharati? Why Professor Shoptin Bush resigned as vice chancellor? If you have time, please comment. Well, first of all, let, uh, Rajin, Rajin, let me give you my opinion. You know, uh, if you think of the Indian scene, you know, physics, chemistry are very laboratory-based disciplines, experiment-based disciplines. And if you look at our country, no institution outside the urban centers had excelled in doing physics and chemistry, with the exception of IIT Kanpur, from where Professor Satyamurti comes. And this is because of the leadership. Um, we can go into that issue. Uh, tremendous leadership in the beginning and tremendous dedication of people who came and joined uh, IIT Kanpur. But other than that, because physics requires laboratories. Even in the heydays of Vishwabharati Physics Department, it was a part of who would admit that all the best teachers were theoreticians. And, and, you know, the experimental areas were not so, because, you know, for running labs, we need uninterrupted power, uh, pure water supply, and today, low temperature, vibration-free atmosphere, etc. not possible. So, Rajinder, my but opinion that, is that, my opinion is that Vishwabharati should not have gone into run-of-the-mill, these departments, but perhaps, 
had done what Tagore wanted, apply technology into rural reconstruction in Srinagatan and talk about science and philosophy, which is exactly yes. what he and Einstein debated on. So, you know, there you can have very in interesting discourses on philosophy, neuroscience, uh, and, and influence of music on neurobiology and, and uh, you know, cognitive language, cognitive learning. And so uh, I think we went in the wrong direction trying to build uh, standard laboratories in physics chemistry, which I think uh, is not a good, good thing. Yeah, I fully agree. This is what I was going to say. It should not have been a conventional physics department or chemistry department. But there is a place, a very important place for science and its philosophy, theoretical science in Shantini. Yes, that has yes. been ignored. Right. I have one last question for Professor Dr. Gupta. And after this, we will close this. Uh, Rajinder Singh says he thanks both of you all for your views. And that is your imaginary discussion between Tagore, uh, Jagadish Bosch, and Abula Bosch. If, if I remember correctly, I think you had even staged this once. I mean, this was, I think, one stage somewhere, was it? Uh, it was staged it, uh, by Jan, Jan, Jan Kripalani. Jan okay, Kripalani okay. did a one act show based on that script. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But it, it is not likely to be restaged soon. Uh, well, I mean, all of us are getting on age, corona, etc. So everything is on the shelf now. But I think it, it, it's a very ni nice idea. But let me tell you that uh, though it is called imaginary, there have been umpteen letters between Tagore and J.C. Bose. And, you know, I mean, it's amazing how Robindranath helped Jagadish Bose. Don't come back to the country. Complete your experiments. I have talked to Maharaja of Tripura. Don't shy away from the, if he funds your research there. So this is the way they wrote to each other. And and Lady Avalabos was the, uh, the pivot between them. And then uh, the letters, uh, that imaginary conversation with C.F. Andrews, however, has pieces also from, uh, that's why it's imaginary, pieces from Discovery of India by Nehru. And by the way, Jawaharlal Nehru was extremely, extremely close to Rabindranath Tagore. In fact, he said, my political guru is Gandhi, but my real guru and spiritual guru is Rabindranath Tagore. So, so you know, and he sent his own daughter to study there. Uh, right. Just and having a small that, remark, small yeah. remark to you, Shujit, I didn't know that you knew Sridivish. Find out from him oh. what the two of us have been trying to do over the last few months or years but tomorrow at this conference mm -hmm. where both of us are there celebrating mm -hmm. uh, belatedly our friend Brikashina's 75th birthday a film will be shown on the dialogue between Rabindranath and Einstein both the nature of reality and music which has been done by Tridivesh in which oh, Brikashina Professor Dr. Gupta and I, I uh, <laughs> feature. Oh, how lovely. I, I really wish I was present to see it. Tidibesh has uh, done this thing on, uh, uh, on uh, which is viraling today on his YouTube, a tribute to Tagore with Deoprutu Bishash's uh, song. Uh, one last comment that has come is from Sheila Saniya. He's saying that such a wonderful discussion this has been listening to the guests was a pleasure and very enlightening. It is. It has been extremely enlightening. And I, uh, from behalf of Kahani Kancheti, and Shishantada, you said that we, Kahani Kancheti, Kahani Kancheti is actually a currently one and a half man band. So that's how it works. But I hope that soon volunteers will join in and we'll be able to do something. Yes, that's the whole idea. The whole agenda is to try and get on to the art and entertainment. And this discussion that we have had today on your book, has certainly been reaching the Kahani's kind of vision that this is, oh, there is one more, there is one more, uh, the, the thing, this gentleman must be known to you all that's coming. Uh, oh, yes. He says, I'm Pankot Shil, but using my wife's account, I think it's hardly possible to get rid of political influences even if you go out of university structure. Yes, it is true that inefficient teachers are the main cause of all such troubles, probably. Well, uh, we, I suppose we Pankot need that. Shil. Yes. Hmm. Pankot Seal is in 
Satyajit Rai Film and Television Institute and in charge of the sound. It's a wonderful person. Hi. There you are. So there. So thank I must first thank my audience who, who seem to have come all over the world. Well, and uh, I'm sure you all enjoyed this session as much as we did. Uh, I'm feeling elated. I'm at the top of the world at this point of time. And uh, Manoj Kumar Rai actor line DHN. তোমার তরবারি আমার করবে বাঁধন ক্ষয় আমি ছাড়বো সকল ভয় তো আই থিঙ্ক দ্যাটস এ নাইস ওয়ে টু অ্যান্ড অ্যান্ড টু ডক্টর ঘোষ অ্যান্ড প্রফেসর সুশান্ত দত্তগুপ্ত থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ফর গ্রিং উইথ আস টুডে থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ফর ফর আ ডিসকাশন উইচ উইল বি আপ অন ইউটিউব সুন অ্যান্ড দেন ইট উইল বি অ্যাভেলেবেল অন আওয়ার ওয়েবসাইট ইটস বিন ইটস বিন সামথিং দ্যাট উইড লাইক টু ফ্রেম ইট you remember there was a time when uh, 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 gavaskar i mean uh, wadekar had taken a catch way back against some west indies team and i think it was ajay bosh who had said that sonar frame badhiye rakhar moto catch so i think this is a sonar frame badhiye rakhar moto act one to one such discussion uh, professor satyamurthy also thanks everybody so with that and we hope that you all will all follow kahani kanchetti go to our website Uh, go to our Pridivesh has done this uh, uh, Pridivesh has done this uh, so <laughs> that's what okay. it is and uh, we hope to meet up soon again and take it on from there thank you thank you so much for being with us bye bye